deep in the heart of Mexico's Sierra Madre Mountains lies the rugged beauty of the Copper Canyon. Remote and vast, the canyon is home to a forgotten people group called the Tarahumara. Seeking refuge from conquering Spaniards centuries ago, the shy and private Tarahumara remained isolated and entrenched, void of influence from outside the canyon. Probably these people, the same people that Cortés saw when he came 500 years ago, they are the same, living under the rocks, without clothes, no schools, no nothing. The Tarahumara Indians of Copper Canyon, Mexico, received a message from Cortés. Pastor Thomas says that white people, the Spanish, are bad. They killed their men, raped their wives, and took their sons and daughters. Today, the Tarahumara live in caves, under cliffs and in small wood and stone cabins in remote areas. They live a simple life, undisturbed by modern technologies. They feel like they have no hope. They are in a corral, in the mountains, it's the only refuge they have. They are dying by hungry and uh, cold and uh, many kind of sickness. And I know that God, our Savior, He has a purpose for this tribe. I started to cry in my, in my heart because we are so close to the, to the country that is the richest country in the whole world, you know. And people is dying of hungry. And, the, and I guess the Lord is start to bring me some, some scriptures to my mind, like, uh, you look me hungry, you, you see me uh, without clothes, Working with over 300 families in the Wakaivo area, Pastor Thomas and Tarahumara Ministries is the only ministry that has ventured into the canyon and stayed. Through relationship, food aid, and education, they have displayed the love of Jesus. Located at the bottom of the canyon is the school, which has become the center of ministry for the surrounding area. The school shelters feeds and educates about 100 children. As time passes and trusted relationships grow, the ministry has become a place where the Tarahumara look for extensive help. Family support and medical aid are growing concerns. Me llamo Rosenda and I tengo 34 años y soy Tarahumara. We met Rosenda, um, I can say, 10 years ago. We would met her in a village very close to where we have our boarding school. And when we were gonna leave, she arrived and she said, you know what, you know, my husband left me. I have two little kids and they're dying of hunger. Can you take me? Some, when husbands go drink, they get violent. They hit their wives. They mistreat them. The men feel bigger, and women do not have authority to defend themselves. Being a girl in the Tarahumara is very sad. It's just sad being a Tarahumara, but when you're a girl, you're born into being like a slave. You're, you're treated like they're, like they're bees. And when they start growing, you know, just being a, a little teenager, say you're 10 years old, they start, when you, their bodies start changing, it's, it's almost for sure every girl is going to be raped by their family members. You know, it can be their dad, it can be their uncle, it can be their brothers, it can be a friend. So it's a very sad situation being a girl in the Tarahumara. I already had the experience on my dad's behalf of what he would do to me. I couldn't really feel much because from a young girl this happened. 
one of my aunts forced me to go with a man. From that, I had my first baby. I was 16. The man was 35. Substance abuse is a contributing factor to the sexual, physical and emotional abuse that is rampant within the culture. There is no word for love or hope in the Tarahumara language. But it's through biblical teaching that Tarahumara Ministries demonstrates that every person has value and that they are loved. It's in understanding God's love that real change happens. I believe there's been a great change even in, in the girl uh, situation. We have a situation with one man that we know and he's now part of, of our disciples that he feels like now he has to treat his wife better. He feels he has to treat his, his daughters better. So you see those changes. They want to do what is best for them. So I believe when Jesus comes, everything changes, even the woman's situation. One day ago, one day, Pastor Thomas came here to Wakaibo and talked to us about Jesus. I accepted. Thanks to God that he has changed me. Now, I don't do what I used to do before. I try to serve the people, serve the whole world to help. Now, what I get, I don't waste it on other things, bad things. All that I get is for food for my family. And all my family, thanks to God, is good. Meeting the immediate needs caused by extreme poverty and isolation have been a priority to Tarahumara Ministries. There are the physical challenges of water availability and food supply, along with the lack of medical aid. However, the social issues are just as daunting and urgent. Building a medical clinic, as well as a short-term 14-bed women's shelter, is a practical way to provide hope and love for the women who suffer violence and discrimination. We see that uh, men treat so bad to the ladies. And it's why the woman shelter want to be a great blessing because those ladies, that uh, if we don't help them, probably they die. It's so bad. And not yet we're going to say it. Not only a lady, but a wife, a mother. The Tarahumara live a survival existence. They have very little contact with life outside the canyon. At one time, there were over one million Tarahumara living in the canyon. There are currently about 60,000. Starvation, cold, TB and dehydration are the primary reasons for their steady decline. The statistics are staggering. 50% of children die by the age of 10. A health clinic in the canyon would literally save lives. Today, because of Tarahumara Ministry's 17-year commitment, love and hope now exist in the canyon. When they know that we are just trying to bless them, help them, and love them, they understand what love means. Tarahumara Ministries has made an incredible impact on the canyon in 17 years, but these people are still dying from preventable illnesses. Christian and Missionary Alliance National Women's Ministries needs your help to change that. Our Social Justice Compassion Project goal is to build a medical clinic and women's shelter. That's where you come in. We need to raise $150,000 to see women and children safe and healthy. Join us in displaying the love and hope of Christ. Jesus.